five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to the Strange Planet Podcast. Oh, Christ, are we good? good. We're, we're up. We're, we're up and loaded. Good. We're up and running and loaded, and we're good this Welcome. time. Welcome. 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 Welcome, everybody, to the Strange Planet Podcast, the strangest of all the podcasts on the strangest of all the planets. We are your hosts. This is... Corey James. And I'm Anthony Zevitek. Uh, big shout out. Thank you to everyone, or at least the one person, who is watching live on YouTube right now. That is a brand new thing that we just started last week that we hope is going to take off and catch fire and pow, right into the stars. To That's the what we're hoping for. To moon? To the moon. To the moon. Pow. To the moon. To the moon. Pow. To the moon. Um, how are you doing? I'm all right. Yeah, he's all right. He's I'm all right. Un- like, I, I was talking about weird stomach bugs. Yeah. I was talking about it earlier. It's weird how like it affects people differently yeah. because of your immune system. Oh, yeah, totally. Like, my whole family right now is like deathly ill <laughs> with this weird stomach bug, uh, but they all got weak stomachs. Okay. So they're just all throwing up and stuff. I haven't thrown up in years. Like I've never, been, like, I've uh, never been like a weak stomach. You're like Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah. You've got your, uh, your, your streak. Yeah. Right. But my intestinal tract has never been all that strong. So when right. I get a stomach bug, it comes out the opposite end. Uh, and I terrible. Been having a good day. Uh. And now I'm. Filling it back up fill with more toxins. With, fill it up with the beer and hope everything goes okay. That's that's how we all get through life, isn't it? Uh, so we're going to start with our normal hour comics, but we do not have any comics. No. It would appear. Uh, I do not have any. Um, sorry. No, uh, we don't got any of our, our comics, so you're not going to see my sweet graphic look at that that's new we told you guys we're going to be stepping it up this year busted out a new graphic for you guys uh super exciting um on the comic book radar though i did see that there's a new there's a new guardians of the galaxy run oh nice coming out um and i i totally forgot to 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 save the tweet to Hmm. even mention it um but yeah there's a brand new guardians of the galaxy run coming out and uh, it would appear that the Guardians now include such people as uh, Nova and um, Nighthawk. Oh, okay. I was going to yeah. say Venom was in Yeah, the I last didn't see Guardians Venom. Yeah, Galaxy, I didn't see but Venom. But that was like a few years back. Yeah, I so. didn't see Venom in this new shot. Um, but I did see Nova and I saw Nighthawk and uh, hmm. I thought that was pretty cool. I forgot to even get any information on it yeah so. when you when you're only used to watching the movies with guardians of the galaxy you kind of forget that they're they're like the avengers in the comic books yeah they're, their team swaps out well yeah well that's it. the uh guardians of the galaxy from the movies that everybody knows is actually not the original guardians no. of the galaxy that they were the guardians of the galaxy from like only a, the past couple of recent years. Well, I mean, even the Avengers, right? That we know from the MCU is right. not the original lineup. Of course not. I mean, the Wasp yeah. was in the original yeah. lineup. Almost every lineup the Wasp right. was in. So exactly, and she didn't even get introduced to the movies until 27, 2018. Yeah, twenty whenever Ant Man came out. I don't know. I don't know anymore. You don't know. I don't know anymore. Don't uh, know. So we're gonna move on. Marvel news. Marvel news. <laughs> Marvel news. Do we got any Marvel news? Do we have any Marvel news? Um, I guess we kind of have a little bit of Marvel news. Uh, Punisher season two had recently just dropped last week on the Netflix. Yep. Uh, Did you get so to we check any of it out? You know what? I checked out a little tiny bit. A little tiny bit. What did you think of the bit. little tiny bit you saw? Uh, of the first uh, of because what I watched was. Four episodes. Okay. Uh, and I thought the first three were great, and then when the fourth one came along, I kind of, it kind of slowed down. Yeah. Okay. So what I was thinking. What did? You, how much did you watch? I'm on episode. I finished episode eleven. Okay. So, so you're two more. You're, okay. So you're very close. Um, okay. I thought it was fan freaking tastic. Mm. I thought everything about it was fantastic. I thought they kind of fixed their. 13 episode mid lol that okay. they always get with the fact that they have three villains. 
Yeah. I wasn't read. I did not know we yeah. were going to get three villains. When they were like, oh, it's Jigsaw, we all just assumed Jigsaw was going to be the main focus. Right. And I loved the fact that we got way more psychological buildup with Jigsaw. Yeah. And focused on John Pilgrim in the first three right. episodes. Yeah. Who, may I add, is not a comic book character. Right. He is created for this show, which like, is uh, amazing. The, the homicidal Ned Flanders is uh, what I kind of <laughs> well, you gotta thought have about that, like, in my mind. Punisher always... Oakley Doakley. <laughs> Punisher always pushes into those uh, things that people don't like to talk about yeah you know, the political side of things the coming back from war and nope. you know having post-traumatic syndrome and stuff right. and how do you you know re- reincorporate yourself into society and and just those kinds of overtones you know yeah. like that aren't so much okay to talk about now, yeah. nowadays totally. like, especially with the russian you know think about the villains from the punisher they're right. very stereotypical for back in the day correct um, correct and this just introduced a whole another big topic into the show with the whole, you know, over fanatic religious side of things. Right. You know what I mean? The extremists and stuff and yeah. actually still doing the, the lashings and stuff and, yeah. and that kind of shit. And I really like that character. I like uh, Scott Pilgrim. I keep saying Scott Pilgrim. John Pilgrim more than I like Jigsaw as a villain. Yeah. This um, you I know, like Jigsaw. But I, I think I'm that, really enjoying John Pilgrim. I think that the problem that Netflix did with Jigsaw is that by not actually making him Jigsaw, like well, they did the same thing with. Uh, it reminds me of uh, Warzone. No, the dude from Daredevil. Bullseye. Bullseye. Yeah. It reminds me of what they did it's with an Bullseye in Daredevil. Right. Right. Y- y- yes, you know that this is coming from that character, yeah. but is it that character? No. I think that the I think but I think that Jigsaw is such a is that like the driving force of that character is his disfigurement. Yeah. And when you don't play up on that dis- like the, it, you know, I think that I think that uh Warzone did the Jigsaw character justice to where it is this pretty boy mafia guy, and he gets fucking wrecked. And then the that. Yeah, but did you really expect this show, being set the way it's set, and their back, you know, their record of how they've went with these shows, being more grounded and more realistic? Did you really think we were going to get this over the top, prosthetic, gnarly looking face? I mean, kind I'm not, of. I'm not trying to kind justify of. what they did because there, if there's one thing in the show that really annoyed me was every time he brought it up. He's like, do you think I can live with this? With these? With all this? And you're like, dude, when you're looking straight at me, I can't even tell there's anything wrong with your face. Right. Until, if you turn to the right, you got like one little scar. Right. If you turn to the left, yeah, you got a nice little jigsaw nice puzzle. beefy, beefy scar. But other than that, what I loved about the character was the the amnesia that they introduced into uh, him yeah. and the whole fact that he has no idea what he did. I yeah. loved that. Is that, is that, uh, cause I obviously don't know. Is that touched upon in later episodes or is that maybe a episode 13 kind of thing where what? he starts to, where he completely remembers? No, no, no. Because the whole thing is if you, you watched, what'd you say? You watched four Three. episodes. So four. you saw him four. escape. From yes. the hospital. Yes. So at that point, he starts trying to figure things out, and right. he starts visiting old friends that he thinks are still friends. He goes yeah. to the 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 black friend that I can't remember his name. Yeah. He goes to Madani, and he goes and, and tries to figure things out. He keeps bringing up Frank and not understanding why Frank wouldn't have come and visit him. Visited him being ah. such a brother, and for some reason that psycho psychiatrist never tells him straight up that like Frank did this to you. He does find out probably in like episode five or six. Okay. And then he like denies it. Like hmm. he finds out and he basically says, you know, the person that's telling him is a liar and there's no way he would do that because he loved Frank's family like his own. Interesting. And it doesn't really, he actually 
finds out that Frank did it to him before he finds out why. Mm. The whole scene that we saw in the photos that were leaked early spring. Yeah. That's the scene where he finds out that Frank ah. is the one who did that to him. Okay. Is when they're in the street and Frank finally comes walking out with the skull on and he's, What are you doing, Billy? And he's trying to do his best Sylvester Stallone impression and you can't understand what he's saying. And Billy's like, You did this to me, Frank? He's like, Go to the road, dude. Yeah, Billy Rooster. No, I did that thing to you that you just done with. But I, I really like this season because that, that teaser trailer we got with the psychological part of it yeah. that's spinning yeah, yeah, yeah. really starts to pan out to ah, nice. to where Billy snaps Frank. Ah, like cool. he really makes Frank become the punisher the the work like the villain oh. like like the frank stops caring he just wants to kill nice and like once frank does that he kind of gives up on himself and is like okay with dying at that point and he does really embrace the punisher like you see some really gnarly scenes with him doing some crazy shit Cool, but um, there you like go. I said, I only got to episode. Yeah, 11, I. So uh, you know, there's gonna be a big old grand finale between him and Billy on yeah. episode thirteen. Yeah, I did like not him. get as into it as I should have this past weekend. But you know, you know what my actual my biggest complaint is? I was so happy. You know, I got to like episode three, and I'm like, I looked at Courtney, and she was actually actually watched all of it with me. She really liked it. And I was like, oh, no Karen, this is so nice. No Karen. Maybe since they canceled Daredevil. We won't get any Karen. And then episode six came, and I'm like, I'm really going to watch this whole season and not have to see Karen. This is amazing. And then episode 11 came, and she comes walking down oh, the hallway, and I'm like, no! Damn it! Damn Why? it! Why? Karen! And then she brought up like all this stuff where I'm like, you can't say that. Daredevil's canceled. Yeah. She's talking about Matt. She's talking about working well, for them. Well, apparently from, uh, we're going to bust off of the Punisher news uh, and go into what I actually just found out on the way over was that uh, according to Charlie Cox, Daredevil season three was already planned, already it was already ready written. to go. Yes. And uh, it would have seen none Daredevil. None of them knew that it was going to get canceled. Like none of them had a heads yeah. up. It so, would have been Daredevil versus Bullseye, right. full on. Um, in season three. I would assume that they already had Punisher basically wrapped. Yeah. So, as to not. You know, like, like I was thinking, why would the lady, the chick that plays Karen, film these parts if she just got her ass canned? Right. But they probably didn't tell her they filmed those parts and then dropped the news on all the actors that they weren't coming back for a, a fourth season of right. Daredevil. Overall, um, I love it. I think it's probably one of the best series on Netflix there you go. so far. I'm sick. Um, I'm still disappointed that. They definitely stuck to their guns, no pun intended, with the whole... That's pun intended. Yeah, I guess that is That's a pun, pun intended. pun intended. They definitely, like, they started these shows and they were like, we're going to give you very little of their costumes. And we were like, maybe as the series goes on, we'll start seeing more right. of their costumes. And they were like, nope, we are keeping this realistic. Because I watched 11 episodes so far and I had half of one episode where he had the vest on. Hmm. Interesting. So, interesting. That's that's a complaint of mine because like yeah, that, we that's what we thought yeah. when we were going into this. We were like, well, he's gonna have it on the whole time yeah. and just murdering people. And I think that uh, did you like the little the girl, the Amy girl? I didn't. Uh, I and I, I was actually line. just about to go into that. Is that I? They always I, have to have a tag along with. Them. I am sick and tired of this. This uh, this the the lone gunman leaves town. And he he tr he walks about and he finds other people in danger. It's kung fu. It's the television show kung Man. fu, and, you know. And I oh, and I'm, I'm so pissed I'm so about that. I'm I'm so sick of that 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 uh, that kind of theme. You like know, he I, finds he finally finds someone that he could fall in love with. Yeah. And then he sees some strange girl run into a bathroom, and he's just like, "Yep, I'm gonna throw it all away." Yeah. For her. Yeah. I, you know, we've, that, that's, it's been done to death. It's been, 
It's been absolutely done to death. And uh, great scene, though. I would, yeah, great scenes. <laughs> Murdering everyone in the bar. But it would have been nice to like. I mean, keep him in New York, like, or maybe he's hiding out in New Jersey. I don't know, but keep him in that kind of area. Yeah, I like, mean, we didn't know where we were gonna pick up with him, and it, right. it kind of makes sense that if they gave him a new, identity. or if you're gonna, or if you're gonna take him out of New York, don't bring him back to New York. Right. There, there's a huge thing with me is that if you're gonna take the story elsewhere, keep the story elsewhere. Yeah, I don't know. That's just me though. That's just me. Yeah, it was a little weird having him travel around and then and like, then have to come back to New York and then swing back into New York. But that that played a big part on the John Pilgrim. I yeah, think the storyline with John Pilgrim drove a lot of this show without it being. Like, it's so weird that the first act of the whole season was focused on him. Right. And then he just kind of fades away. Yeah. And they start focusing on Billy. Would it... But he's still there, and he comes to New York to finish the job. So I don't know what this grand finale is going to hold. Would it have been... Like, is it going to be Billy versus Punisher versus John Pilgrim all at the same time? Would it have been better, theoretically, to keep... The Punisher versus John Pilgrim dynamic throughout the whole thing, and then have Billy Russo wake up from his coma in the last episode, or the last, or the second to last episode, because of course, of course, we we did not know, of course, that all these shows were going to be canceled, and of course, we are waiting for the day where they announce that Punisher has been canceled. But wouldn't have been, it would have been so sweet to have not Jigsaw at all in season two and have him go do something else. Have the whole thing be in Ohio. Have, I think people would have been too pissed because really? they hyped all the trailers, all the teaser trailers. Yeah, but that's of course but of course but of course if if you're doing it my way, you don't make those trailers and you don't make those teasers. Well I think that's do that. that was what made it cool for me was because it's kind of the opposite was yeah. we didn't know about John Pilgrim maybe maybe uh, from yeah, the that, trailers. That's true. So they That's introduced true. a whole new villain that we had no idea was going to be there That's from true. the beginning. And we didn't really even see what what we would call Jigsaw until, I don't know if we still, I'm on episode 11 and I still can't say that he went full-blown Jigsaw. Is yet. he going to, is, is, uh, is, uh, do you think, um, Frank Castle's going to get his hands on Billy Russo one more time and tear that face up again? Getting a little bit more mutilated? Maybe that's what they're building up to. Maybe. It's an actual, like... Or maybe John Pilgrim will be the one to bust up Billy Russo. I really like John Pilgrim. I know I that. Yeah, that's that, a, that it's, a, it's, a, it's a great character. Wait till you get to the scene where he uh, goes full Frank Castle on it on this whole bar of people because you haven't really you haven't seen him right. fight yet. You've right. only seen him be like mysterious and right. kind of in the background. Right. Once he actually gets cornered by like a bunch of thugs in a in a bar, kind of showing you where his backstory came from yeah. like he used to be a hitman that worked right. in new york right. before he went right. and went all religious and got married he just oh it's some of the gnarliest stuff ever like it's cool because that episode starts with him just completely messed up and it kind of does one of those like backwards things yeah, it says like 24 hours yeah, ago yeah but it's like it starts with him tending to his wounds and each wound that he goes to, it shows a flashback of how he got it in yeah. that one fight. And he's, like, picking something out of his head. And glass. And he, like, holds it up to the screen, and you're like, are those teeth? And then it flashes back to him, like, headbutting this really tall dude and snapping Whoa. the dude's teeth off in his head and shit. And, oh. Neato. Yeah. Neato. Punisher Season 2. Check it out on Netflix if you haven't already. Check her uh, out. Check her out. Uh, Spider-Man Far From Home. Came out. The trailer came out last week. We talked about it on the you show last that? week. Yeah, yeah, we did talk about it. Yeah. Have you heard any uh, fan theories on that little trailer yet? I heard that uh, Nick Fury might not be Nick Fury. Is he a little little green? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know this. I don't. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> these answers <laughs> to these questions. I don't. I don't know. Uh, you think I, he's a scroll, or uh, do you think people are like not realizing and not? Letting the fact that this movie takes place f way farther down the line than than we're like we're getting a trailer at a wrong time. Yeah, like a lot of stuff. Honestly, hasn't happened yet. Uh, yeah. Honestly, <laughs> uh, 
no offense to any, you know, and I'll, of course I'm not upset that I got to see this trailer, but the Spider-Man Far From Home trailer should have been released uh, in the beginning of Captain Marvel. Uh, oh, yeah. It should have. They definitely should have held on. Yeah. There was no reason. We get, we're like yeah. nine months away. Yeah. There's no reason why they couldn't have held it yeah. until the premiere of Endgame. Right. Uh, you know. Yeah. Maybe Agreed. made it like a, like an end of the movie trailer. Yeah. Like yeah. post-credit teaser. Yeah. That would have been awesome. Agreed. Um, I don't think we needed it this soon. It, it no, it's it's funny. Yeah, yeah, it did just spoil all stuff, and it's funny because you don't have to build a a fan buzz with Marvel movies anymore. The buzz is already there. Right. All you have to do is announce the movie, and the buzz is already there. You don't have to show us a, a trailer uh, seven months before the movie right. premieres. You don't have to do that. No, you there you, no you can wait. You could wait. You could you like Corey said. You could have literally waited until the end of April after Endgame was released, and you could have done the trailer, and and that would have been totally fine. But you know, I think it blew a lot. And yeah, maybe some people are scrolls, and maybe. Captain Marvel is going to be a lot more important to the entirety of the Marvel Cinematic Universe franchise layout than we know. Oh, yeah. I saw that. I saw that. So, yeah. Uh, Nick Fury, Skrull, I don't think so. No. Because I think we're getting the Skrulls in Captain Marvel. Correct. Which is in the 90s. Correct. Are the Skrulls even going to, like... Roll over to a yeah, different movie, that, we'll or see, are they going to be confined to that storyline? It's it's funny because everyone's talking about the scrolls and the scrolls and who's a scroll and in Endgame is who's going to be a scroll and <clears throat> and are we working towards uh, secret invasion and right. are we doing this and are we doing that? I don't think we're doing any of that. I honestly, I like Corey just said. I think the scrolls might just be a like, Captain Marvel kind of thing. Come, you know, show up, show up, uh, fight, and, leave, uh, defeat, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't see why that wouldn't be it. And I don't think that we should be thinking about scrolls much more than that. It's I don't think they're going to show up in Endgame. No. So it's too much there. Right. There's too much going on in Endgame for Natasha Romanoff to be revealed as a scroll or uh, whomever. Yeah, everybody's saying like Tony Stark's going to be a scroll. No. Nah, that doesn't make that any does sense. Not make He's a, been there from the beginning. He's yeah, the building block not, of this whole it, thing. Yeah, it does not make a lick of they sense. Are. Yeah, they have and, balls. and all right, and all right. Here's to the whole Tony Stark becoming a scroll. Just because something happens in an animated film doesn't mean it's going to happen everywhere. And uh, would a scroll have the same emotional attachment to the d life and death of Tony Stark's parents that Tony Stark would have? I don't fucking think so. No, we saw we saw yeah. too intimately into yeah. who this person exactly. is in these movies too. Right. For them to be like, oh, he's oh, a scroll no, the whole time. Oh, yeah. And yes, they, Marvel does have balls. We've right. seen it in Infinity War when they right. killed off half their cast. But they don't have that big of balls. No, To take not. a character that is the MCU. Yeah. And take it all, just pull the rug right out from underneath you. Exactly. Agreed. Uh, uh, we got some... Uh, DC news? No. We got some toy leaks. Yeah. From Marvel. Yeah. We always every year we get. I think toys. toys are the fucking it's crazy. killer. Uh, although, although I will give credit to the uh, Infinity War Lego playset that was set in New York, where they had a little newspaper stand piece of the Lego set. Yeah, I remember. And the newspaper article was about Daredevil. Yeah, I will give them that credit that sometimes they throw cool shit like that in to throw you off. But, uh, yeah, toys are the fucking devil. And it started with the, uh, the rocket and, Thor. uh, Thor, two-pack. Wearing the... Wearing the... Wearing the armor, but then on the back where it said that they team up to fight a even greater threat. Right. Which I um, thought was shite. Um, so what I'm hearing now is that these aren't just armor suits. These are quantum realm suits. Ooh. Would the uh, suit be necessary and for the, the quantum realm? It's the only way that Ant-Man can know, get in there. I know. I know. <laughs> He's got to shrink. I know. I'm just messing around. Um, Keep talking. My thing is, uh, so the only four action figures that we've had leaked so far that have had these quantum realm suits are uh, Thor, Rocket, um, 
uh, with Scarlett Johansson's character, Black, Black Widow. Widow, has just had an action figure leaked that has the suit on. And the one we're staring at here on my phone, Professor Hulk. Does it say Professor Hulk on the toy? No, but on the leak, whoever leaked it, said Professor Hulk action figure leak. And my that was my first thing, that everyone is blowing this up saying, Professor Hulk leaked, Professor Hulk action figure. And I'm going, where do we see Professor? Yeah. Anywhere on this right. package. Yeah. It just it says, says Hulk. 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 And yes, he looks... The way they sculpted his face yeah. looks a little more, more ruffalo. distinguished. More ruffalo. A little bit more aware yep. of what's going on, which we kind of speculated that it was yeah. going to be a mashup of the two of them. And Correct. they were going to be smarter in that. And that's fine. Right. Um, but I did hear that these are Quantum Realm suits, and only four of the action figures that have been leaked so far have had that suit. Interesting. Iron Man was the, just still had the Bleeding Edge suit, mm -hmm. the new action figure. And Captain America did not have a Quantum Realm suit. He has a new suit that looks very reminiscent of his original comic book suit. The uh, the dragon skin looking... Yeah, scaly. Uh, scaly thing. So, what does this mean? Does it mean that, that Thor and Rocket and Black Widow and Hulk are all going to somehow be going through the Quantum Realm to different places? Maybe. Because we thought that it was going to be Ant-Man and... Tony. And, yeah, from the future. Right. Um, I still have yet to understand where people are getting all these this information off of this action figure. Yeah. Um, there is a back... There is a back of this box picture somewhere. I think... I think... I think for everyone... I think they're spacesuits. I think to assume that it's Professor Hulk is terribly wrong. I think that the uh, Quantum Realm suit is a little uh, weird because there's no helmet included, yeah. and obviously you yeah, would need a breathe. helmet, right? So yeah, space suits, and maybe it's maybe it's maybe it's kind of uh, maybe Rocket helps in uh, making well, a suit com or you know comparable to. What they use in Guardians with too, with the little beep with, with the yeah, mesh, where, where it's the mesh, yeah, the mesh that covers you entirely. Maybe Rocket helps them build that, and uh, I don't know, but yeah, it is a little bit weird. Hmm. So, okay. and I, I've just been I'm so pumped because I said last week that maybe Mysterio was making the the villains, you know, illusions, right? right. And that's all I've seen this yeah. past couple of weeks is yeah. everybody going, maybe he's maybe the one who brought the villain. he's the one. And I'm like, yeah, that's what I said. Watch our podcast. Uh, Strange Planet <laughs> podcast every Tuesday at 5 o'clock on YouTube Live, baby. <laughs> uh, we're moving on uh, from the Marvel talk to uh, a little something. We don't have any DC. No, we don't have any DC. Do we ever? No. There it is. Look at that. <laughs> we'll get we'll get throw the logo up, but we're not throw the talk logo up, but we're not going to talk about it. D O L E O, uh, Space Force. Corey, you want to tell us about Space Force? Oh, um, the movie. Yeah, let me bring up the uh, the trailer. Here. Yeah, bring us up a trailer. Uh, Space Force, I assume, is probably it's a, a show. Sorry. It's a oh, Netflix it's a tele. Uh, okay. All right. Here we go. And uh, we're going to bring up the trailer, and we're all going to watch it together. Well, you're not going to be able to hear it, but. I'm not going to be able to hear it. Or oh, they're can, not going to be. Hear it. I can hear it. So, here we go. June 18th, blah, 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 federal government. Sets up Space Force, right. obviously. Because what of Donald, Donald Trump, Trump said. just said. The goal of the new branch is to defend satellites from attack and form, form other Space-related tasks. Space-related tasks or, or something. something. Oh, interesting. Here we go. This is the story of the men and women who have to figure it out. Interesting. Oh, well, that's all right. Oh, I'm pumped, well, there man. you go. Created by Greg Daniels, Greg and, Daniels Steve Carell. and Steve Carell. Not bad. Big names. Oh, starring Michael Scarn. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great if they made his name Michael Scar? Space Force. Interesting. Oh yeah. Come, Come only on Netflix. Netflix. Coming soon. 
Yep. Do we know anything else about it? Um, from what I've read in an article, it is the spiritual sequel to <laughs> The Office. Okay. Because everybody knows we've uh, seen the... Uh, re- uh, God, I can't talk. The talk that people had with Steve Carell where he said, the interview where they, he said that he didn't think The Office would work in this day and age right. with the jokes and stuff that right. they used. And he wouldn't be down to do a reunion office show. I think this is the as close as we're going to get yeah. to that. Um, it sounds similar to that. It sounds like it's going to be hilarious. Yeah. Like, like what, what other stuff? Like, what is there to do in the Space Force if the Space Force was a real thing? Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Uh, I, I honestly, I'm not finding a lot of information about no, it. No, it just popped up a couple days ago, and I had no idea all i saw was sequel to the office and i went what and i clicked on it and watched that little teaser that they have and i got excited yeah that's awesome that's great no it's a, it's a lot of fun uh i'm all about it yep i think I that's awesome you would be you figured correctly uh it's great to see steve carell keep doing things especially after um welcome to marwin bombed uh terribly um in the box i know it sucks I yeah. wish I would have went to see it. I didn't I even know. know it came out. Uh, Glass is already out. Glass has not been doing well. No, I, I was actually I was gonna I was gonna talk about that a little later. Uh, might as well talk about it right now. I just Glass has there's like a, lot of a movies that there's a 79 percent audience approval on uh, Rotten Tomatoes and the critic response is about 39 percent. Yeah, I heard uh, it's uh, I heard it's a it's it's the opposite of like you build up. And got people who are interested in comic books yeah. and comic book movies interested in this movie. And I heard this movie is kind of like burning on those kinds of people. Yeah, I believe like, it. On the yeah. whole, you know, phenomenon that is comic book movies being so big right now. Yeah. I, I've heard that it's kind of like a poke at all the people who love comic book movies. I, uh, so. I mean, I'm, of course I'm going to watch it eventually, yep. but uh, I don't know that I'm going to be uh, a big fan of it. Uh, Space Force, check it out. Coming to Netflix soon. We don't know much else, but we know that. So, moving on, we had a huge announcement this past week. Are we going in order? Yes. Okay. Huge, huge, huge announcement this past week. Uh, are they watching that, or are they watching me? They're watching both. Oh, okay. There's a little... They're watching right here. Okay, well, we gotta pay the ads, of course. Uh, <laughs> Jason Reitman, son of Ivan Reitman. You wanna pause that uh, when it's queued up and ready? Um, Jason Reitman, son of uh, Ivan Reitman, the, of course, legendary director of Ghostbusters, Yeah, came out and said that he has been tasked with... Ghostbusters 3. Yes. Which will fall in the original continuity timeline of the first two yeah. Ghostbusters movies. I am is so pumped. I am so pumped at how they did this. Yeah. No information. No one knew this was coming. No, and yeah. And then the teaser dropped. Yeah. Like, that's the way to do shit. Like, don't let people know about it a year in advance to make an opinion Right. Before they know anything about it. Yeah. Um, drop, like, keep it silent. Drop the teaser. Even if it's a true teaser like mm-hmm. this one is. Um, we, like, this is amazing. Um, yeah. Especially, I'm okay with it because it is the son of the original director. Correct. Like, it's, it's perfect. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you get the music yep. from it. Entertainment Weekly has learned exclusively that Jason Reitman will direct and co-write an upcoming film set in the world that was saved decades previously by the proton pack wearing working stiffs in the original 1984 movie, which was directed by his father, Ivan Reitman. So we know that after the first one, when they saved New York, we know that we assumed they were going to be huge yeah they we're gonna you know their business was gonna flourish they were gonna be celebrities yeah. and it was gonna be great and then when the second movie came out we learned that it was the opposite they were having a hard time paying yep. the bills they were doing birthday parties and stuff so it's 
I'm going to assume with this being an actual sequel to that in that universe, the Ghostbusters kind of have just died off and disappeared into history. Yeah. Now, yeah. in this trailer, we see... What do we see? We see a lot of interesting things in this, yeah. like, 30 seconds. Let's trailer. watch this. Let's watch right, this yeah, trailer watch together, uh, and then we'll talk more about it. So let's look around, see if we see anything bopping out to us in the outsides. That well, first thing, the music. We get the music course. from the original scene yep, in the original in the library. Movie. Nothing of importance on the outsides, of course. A little bit of lightning. A little, little bit of lightning. A little bit of something in there. Panning closer. Oh. Somebody working on something. And we see some proton blasts. Oh, and the, the wind reveals Ecto-1, baby. Yeah. And then a uh, proton We're pack firing up. up and then not summer, functioning. <laughs> summer of 2020. Awesome. Getting ready for it. Um, so here we, we go. A uh, little quote from uh, Jason Reitman. I've always thought of myself as the first Ghostbusters fan when I was a six-year-old visiting the set. I wanted to make a movie for all the other fans, Reitman says. This is the next chapter in the original franchise. It is not a reboot. What happened in the 80s happened in the 80s, and this is set in the present day. Yeah. Um, Huge. This is my, so my, this is my speculation. Speculation time. Go it! Um, from what I've read, because uh, one of the actresses from the one that Ghostbusters that came out a year or two ago, yeah, Ghostbusters answering the call or whatever it's called. I, I think it's just called Ghostbusters. No, it actually they actually added they, more they of added a, title a timeline so that they weren't all, because they were trying to make it known that it's like it's its own thing. Um, she was not happy. That would be Leslie Jones. Yeah, she tweeted out that them making this sequel. And acting like her movie never happened is like something that Trump would do. That's what she said. Um, I don't know. That's not That's not what I'm here to talk about. What I'm here to talk about is that movie sucked. That movie looked like it was going to suck and has nothing to do with the fact that there was women in it. Right. We had talked about that a long time ago. Right. This movie was not said that it was going to have all males in it. Right. Nothing was said yet. No. Except for in the article I did read where it is – I don't know if it's speculated or if he said that it's going to be for kids. Kids in well, the sense that – I don't know. We don't they're, know if they're, they're teenagers. Not, right. They're, I don't think they're going to be children because let's look at the timeline. Folk. Let's look at the timeline. They'll be about our age. Is what I'm thinking. Oh, okay. Because so if the kids first one fans, if the well, no, they might even be the kids of the actual Ghostbusters. Like, because the go first Ghostbusters is set in 1984. Right. None of them have kids. None of them are married. None of them are right. this. None of them are that. They could, in the time since, they could have gotten married, had kids. If you're about 28 years old, you were born in 1990, as I am. So, yeah, why couldn't they be born in 92, 91, and they could be about 26, 25 years that. old, and they could really start building, which is why I dropped a couple of suggestions mm -hmm. of to you of who I think should be play whom, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, uh, so, yeah, I all right, so let me go back to what you were saying um, about Leslie Jones right. uh, not being happy. Yeah. Now, well, we I knew that was going to happen. I, let me first off, let me say, I love Leslie Jones. I think she's fantastic. I think she's wonderful. I love Saturday Night Live. I love the things she does. I love Kate McKinnon. I think she's amazing. I love Melissa McCarthy. I think she's fantastic when you give her the right thing to do. Also, I ultimately, with all my heart, love Kristen Wiig. I think she's one of the greatest comedic minds of our generation. That being said, that movie, That's Ghostbusters <laughs> Answering the Call, was not good. And that's not their fault. It's the studio's fault. It's not my fault. It's the studio's fault. So, yeah. It's the dude that played in Heavyweight's fault. 
You remember that Paul Feig. Paul, Paul Feig. Paul Feig. Paul Feig. I took me a second to remember what his name was. He's it, in heavyweight. I know. I know. Yeah, he <laughs> plays. He plays the skinny camp counselor yeah. who used to be a fat guy who wears the half shirts and the. Yeah, it's funny that I can remember off. that, but I would never I know. remember his name. I know, and it's funny because in the office, uh, whenever Andy's going to meet his uh, his uh, his agent. Um, He's the guy who has the, cat dog mouse. Oh, yeah. He's no, the guy the who comedy has uh, first. You know, right. Was a sci-fi. Mouse. Right. Um, they so, yeah, tried I, to make it their know, own and they failed, and that's first. fine. Don't make it a. It's, it's don't just make it a thing like, about. Don't make it a thing about. Oh, because we're women, you you were trying to erase what we did. No, that's right. not it. Because you made a crap movie, we're trying to erase right. what you did, right. and we're not even trying to erase what you did. We're trying to no, continue. If someone likes your movie. Right, they can keep watching your no, movie. No, and that's and you <laughs> know what, and, and I tell you what, and you know what would be fine. You know what would be really fine is if they continued this story that we're about to get in 2020 and brought in the women from the Ghostbusters movie and had a team up. Yeah, I don't know. That, that would be a okay. risk. I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. But see, I think that would that be... that movie flopping so hard, I don't know if they would... I think that would be okay. I think that would be okay. Because, yeah, the movie flopped... But the four women involved yeah, are some are. of the greatest yeah. comedic minds of our generation. I've never been a fan of Melissa McCarthy, and I don't think I've ever seen anything with the uh, the, the black lady. Leslie Jones. Leslie Jones. Yeah. But um, She mostly just does Saturday Night Live. I like the other two. Kate McKinnon and uh, Kristen Wiig, Kristen of Wiig, course. I love it. I miss everything she's in. So we, we have no plot for the upcoming Ghostbusters 3 in 2020. Um but we we have no plot. Um, we have we don't know who the characters are going to be, and uh, we are not sure whether. So what I've what I've heard I've heard some good speculations. Okay. Um, maybe that the person in the barn is either a huge super fan of the Ghostbusters who yeah. has collected the stuff over the years. Right. And or... obviously the ominous. Uh, storms happening. Mm. We know that storms mean something's shit's going down, and yeah. they're gonna need to fight back. Yeah. Um, I've heard Oscar from the second movie, the baby. Oh, might have it might be the dude in the barn tinkering around. Bill Murray's son. Yeah. Well, we don't know that, but huh? I've heard Interesting. that. Interesting. And then you had a pretty good. I had some fan nice. Theory. I had some. Uh, well, I uh, not as much fan theory as much as if I were if casting. I were if I <laughs> right if I were casting this movie and I were writing it to where it's the original Ghostbusters sons and or daughters. I'm not going to say that I don't want a woman involved because I would love that. But if you were going to do Egon's son, of of course Egon played by Harold Ramis who passed away in. 2014 rest in peace and we will miss you forever but if you're going to cast his son thomas middleditch from silicon valley and the verizon commercials would be amazing yeah that would be awesome amazing and if you wanted to bring in an actor with fucking name recognition and draw right now to play wilson zettimore's son of course played by ernie hudson originally you would bring in michael b jordan yeah Boom. That would help. Right there. Um, I have heard from the direct from the director that the uh, the surviving of the original cast will be in the movie. Yes, I have heard that as well. So it would make sense for the children, their yeah. children, to be maybe. Um, I don't get that from this teaser. I yeah. think that's why I'm going more with a a person outside of the group. Yeah. Like, yeah, like I don't get a, I don't, I don't know. Maybe, I guess maybe if it's like Bill Murray's character, um, like he still has all the junk. It would be funny. Have you ever seen the movie St. Vincent? Hmm. St. Vincent is a Bill Murray movie uh, from a couple of years ago where he plays this just down and out, beat up, drunk piece of shit. And he takes this neighborhood boy under his wing. And that, that's like what I think of when I think of Venkman right now is that he's just this beat down piece of shit. Like drunk, who are just, we gonna see Sigourney Weaver? I think we will see Sigourney yeah. Weaver. She has been Is honestly she gonna come back for Zool. She's been the constant. <laughs> like when you think of a sci-fi movie, like she was in oh, fucking she's the Paul. Queen of she was sci-fi. in Paul. Like you, she was like, in Cabin in the Woods. Yeah, like she showed up at the end. And yeah, you're like are you kidding me? She's yeah. in everything. She's the fucking constant for <laughs> sci-fi. sci-fi. Sigourney uh, Weaver's there. 
I just want to read this little quick uh, quote before we move on to other subjects uh, from Jason Reitman. Uh, I love everything about it. The, icon the iconography, the music, the tone. I remember being on set and seeing them try out the card catalog gag for the first time when the library ghost makes them come flying out. I remember the day that they killed Stay Puft and I brought home a hardened piece of foam that just sat on a shelf for years. I was, well, I was scared there was a terrier dog underneath my bed <laughs> before people knew what a terror dog was was that's awesome ladies and gentlemen he's a true this, fan right yeah this movie has been placed in the hands of somebody who is going to do it absolute that's justice the vi that's why i am on was on board from this from yeah. the second i clicked that teaser yeah. that teaser is 20 seconds of just giving you love yeah from the ghostbusters yeah it made you with nothing barely anything happening in that trailer it made me feel like i was watching ghostbusters yeah you know, maybe the music of it obviously helps that vibe, but everything, the cinematography, the storm, yeah. the eeriness of it, it didn't make me laugh. Yeah. It showed me that I'm about to watch an awesome ghost yeah. sci-fi movie. Yeah. With uh, maybe a little comedy thrown in. Uh, one more thing, uh, real quickly, before we move on, uh, Ivan Reitman, original director, will be producing the movie, so you know it's in great hands. Right awesome. Now. I'm pumped. Good stuff. I'm so pumped. Ladies and gentlemen. Something crazy Ghost that we did not expect to no, happen. No, Ghostbusters 3, summer of 2020. Uh, you better look out because I'm looking out too. Good things come in three. Boom. Well, I guess there's four. Segway. Segway to, we had a trailer drop this past week. Uh, really exciting, really fun. Um, we're going to queue it up. We're all going to watch it together. No, um, no. You know what I don't like? All right, tell me. I don't like this weird thing that they're doing with where trailers they, where nowadays. They, where they bust a little bit where out. Where they show you a recap of the two-minute trailer <laughs> that you're about to watch. Why do they do that? Oh, when did it you. start? No, I'm with you. Out I'm of with nowhere. You. I'm with you. Every trailer's like, flash, 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 flash. All right, now yeah. watch the trailer. And like, <laughs> I kind of just did. Kind of just did. Why do they no, do that? I'm with you. I don't like it. I'm with you. Well, we're about uh, to watch the trailer with you guys. Here we go. Uh, John Wick 3. Uh, the trailer dropped this past week, and let's all watch it together. Summit Entertainment. I'm so pumped. Lionsgate. So Lionsgate. many good movies this year coming well, I know. 2019 might be the, that the year Lionsgate of movies. is okay, okay with me. It's like direct sequel. Yeah. Direct. Like, he just ran away with his dog, and he's still running with his dog. Yeah. This is a very epic tone. You know what I just realized? What? They're not seeing what we're seeing. <laughs> now they are. Sweet. I'm getting the hang of it. We're, we're getting there. <laughs> Whew. I'll I'd fucking... It's even. I'd kill him. I love it. He says everybody in the city wants him dead. I'd say the odds are even. Wow. Such a... <laughs> yeah, he such throws a, his gun at the I, dude's and head. And I tell you, this is such a big epic feel. Yeah. Like, the, the Sinatra-esque score in the background. Larry, Larry, Larry Fishburne, Ruby Riot, Or not Ruby Riot, Ruby whatever her name is. Ruby Rose got killed. Ruby Rose, she, okay. Didn't I, she get killed in the second one? I thought that was Ruby Rose. No, he murdered her. Oh. Thank God. Her Ruby Riot is a WWE wrestler. Yeah, we John saw. Well, no, horse? we saw that. We saw this. We saw that um, a couple of months ago. Halle Berry shows. Oh up yeah, with her her dogs. Oh yeah. Boom! John Wick Chapter Three, Parabellum, coming at you. Wow, boy howdy. Boy, howdy. Boy, howdy. That's some fun stuff, isn't I'm it? I'm so pumped. Yeah, good stuff. Um, uh, did we expect anything whew. different? I think we got exactly what we expected. Like, we kind of knew. Yeah. 
Um, but you know what the great thing about this? People is? keep asking me if I'm back. I'm thinking I'm back. <laughs> I'm gonna have to watch John Wick now tonight. Like, F the Punisher. I'm going back to John Wick. I can't watch the first one anymore. Like, it just makes me too sad. Uh, but, you know what's great about this? And, like, that trailer's fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it's it's exactly what we expected. Yeah. It's just gonna flow right from the second one yes. and be just him killing more people. Yeah. But this is its own thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. this is our era of. Yeah. 007. Yeah. And like, it's over the top violence. It's yeah. just for us. Right. Like, it's it's like shoot them up. Yeah. But good. And you know what? It's actually <laughs> funny. It's, it's, I, I love how you, uh, I love how you just equated it to 007. To it's where, nothing like 007. To where, I mean, honestly, in five to 10 years when Keanu doesn't feel like doing it anymore, you could pass on the John Wick mantle to the next guy. Yep. And it's exactly like that. Like John Wick doesn't have to be a it's, person. It's a, it's a, it's a mentality. Right. It's a persona. Right. It's like James Bond. And like my favorite, my favorite fan theory of all time is that James Bond's not a person. It's a code name. Right. The government keeps giving right. it to new agents. John Wick could be that. Like you, like the next person. Like John Wick's not a person. It's a code name. Right. It was the name and, they gave him when he went into like protection after yeah, he left. Right. Yeah, exactly. Like, it could be this whole big giant thing, and you're building it so well. And let's just talk about how sexy Keanu looks. I can't. Looks. Keanu, I can't get out of here. Is it, is I'll it, watch it, anything is it, with him in it nowadays. Is like, it, I was never a fan of him. I know. Before. I know. Is Until, it still like. Man of Tai Chi. Oh wow, and not, that's like that's like the recent. That's, he directed that's, Man. Well, of that's Tai-Chi. yeah, that's post uh, the day the Earth stood still. Keanu. That yeah, was, I wasn't that a was, fan of that. One. Well, that was the first thing he Once did. Once he after. grew his hair, that's the first thing he did after. Um, <laughs> Once his hair grew, I'm on board. Like. Does Keanu have it written into his contract that every scene has to be wet? Does he have to have wet hair? Oh yeah. Because I love it. Yes. I love it. So it has to be much. raining. It has to be dark. He has to have a dog. And with the rumors, <laughs> with the rumors of a new Bill and Ted movie coming out, Keanu his could really wrong. could Keanu could really show his range again. And like that's, that's what the thing is like since since the Matrix. Yeah, it's kind of he's all been typecast. Action. He's been typecast. Like Street Kings uh, was a great movie, um, but maybe he just found his niche though. Like, yeah, like when when he. He loved doing the Matrix. Right. If you read anything or see any interviews with him talking about the Matrix, he really actually enjoyed it. Yeah. He learned more like new things that he had never done before. He yeah. learned kung fu and like martial arts from right. Tiger Chen. That has to be awesome. Yeah. And to be able to be interested in something and be a big enough star and have the money to do it and push towards that. I'm all I'm on board for him continuing to yeah. do his action movies, but yes, if he's gonna do a new Bill and Ted, it be it will be nice. Um, he just did a movie with uh, what's her face Lydia from uh, Beetlejuice. Winona Ryder. Winona Ryder. Uh, just it was that, a wedding date. That, the wedding date. Yeah. And me and Courtney watched it, and it was weird. Yeah. And like awkward yeah and you have to have a certain sense of humor to think it was funny right but i thought it was funny yeah and no, i yeah. thought he did a really good job at just constant like weird banter back and forth between them two yeah which we've seen them before right in scanner darkly of course and they did really well together. i love a scanner darkly man Nobody can we just about that can we movie. just talk about can we no know like talk can next scanner week's darkly. episode just be us reviewing I'm scanner down. darkly we gotta watch it again i, I haven't watched it in a, I haven't watched it in a long time but i i it would be nice it actually to see it, it honestly it just popped up on the uh voodoo free section oh is it on there uh, it was on there i don't know if it's still I on there still um so yeah, Scanner Darkly. Um, I'm down for him showing, like you said, showing yeah, his show range because he hasn't done anything else other than action in a while, right. and he's been busy. But right. that that wedding date movie was a yeah comedy. It was a rom com. It was a weird comedy. It was a rom com. It was a depressed, angry comedy, <laughs> which is what you want. Two depressed, movies, angry people right in the now. world just constant ripping on each other. That's basically was, and then they fell in love. And continued to rip on each other. Yeah. So that's what that was. Uh, John Wick, uh, Chapter 3, Parabellum, coming at you very soon. We're going to talk about one more trailer uh, this week, and then we're going to close out the show. 
Um, another Netflix. Uh, yeah, Netflix is uh, doing some. They're doing here, some things. Man. We're gonna show you a little trailer for Velvet Buzzsaw, starring Jake Gyllenhaal. Let's watch it together. A Sundance. I love the Sundance. Actually, well, we have a I have a fun Sundance fact coming up later. What's better, one or two? I'm quite curious to know either. I think sober hasn't been good for him. Pierce was in the full bloom of alcoholism here. Exactly. Never should have quit drinking. Johnny Milk. Oh, wow. <laughs> Something strange. <laughs> Something truly goddamn strange. There you go, Velvet Buzzsaw uh, from Netflix, directed and written by the same gentleman who directed and wrote one of my favorite movies, Nightcrawler. Yeah, boy. Uh, looks very interesting. It looks like a, it looks like an extremely dark and uh, twisted and uh, uh, just crazy it's turn. Yeah, it's still got that Nightcrawler feel where yeah. it's like kind of tongue in cheek, like. Kind is like, Jake Gyllenhaal the original artist? Yeah. Uh, is he? Yeah. I think he is. I, I just saw a video it. pop up the other day that said, is uh, Donnie Darko insanely inspired or the worst, dumbest movie ever? Uh, and I didn't watch it because, like, I bet you a lot of people think it's stupid. It's, but. Yeah, a lot of people think it's stupid. Uh, I think, uh, let me just say this right now on the Strange Planet podcast, Jake Gyllenhaal is the original artist uh, before he goes into the uh, mental asylum. Oh, yeah? You yeah. think so? Oh, I think okay. so. 100%. You, okay, so there's a... Kind of gives us a... Here, let me let me throw it up real quick. I'm just so bad at this. Kind of gives us a weekly strange. Um, I The same channel on YouTube that I watched the other day that gave us the Man from No Country that we did a couple weeks ago yes. also did a video on the top 10 scariest paintings in the world interesting and one of them was based on a person was based was about a person who painted uh pictures and used blood for the reds oh. in their paintings and then committed suicide and someone their landlord found them and had all the paintings and actually sold them to museums and so made this a ton is of money. kind of a true story i don't know if this is based on that i think but it is it's weird that i saw that video like last week yeah and then this trailer came out and no I was like, it's not it's not weird it's strange <laughs> but um no i think that's I awesome think the that trailer is great um yeah. i think it's gonna be a it's gonna be definitely like a if you liked Nightcrawler, yeah. which some people didn't, 
Um, if you didn't like Nightcrawler, fuck you. Yeah, about that? I think it's going to be a, a, a vibe towards that. It's funny, when I was watching the trailer for the first time, I got this, like, I thought it was going to be just a a poke at the modern society and right. everyone's a critic. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. And then halfway through that tra- trailer, it was like, nope. Nope. <laughs> We're no, going so off the people rails. People are dying. Right. People are dying. But I think it looks interesting. No, I, think I agree. Netflix has a lot, a lot of stuff going. I think uh, they're starting to push in different directions. Speaking now, of probably. Netflix, uh, Netflix is set to join the MPAA, the Motion Pictures Association of America. Uh, the announcement should be coming as soon as tomorrow, which is does that mean they're going to release their movies in the theaters? It means that they're going to be considered a lot more widely when it comes to awards and oh, okay. possible theater releases. Because I know they were, we had done, we had talked about them buying theaters and releasing them. Right. I did see a trailer the other day for something coming out on Netflix that said that it was going to be in theaters, and I thought that was a little weird. Yeah. So I didn't know if that maybe had something to do with what you were saying. Very weird. Um. Look at that. Look at that. Right on about time ski, Nailed ladies and it. gentlemen. Uh, this seems like the perfect place to wrap it up. Yeah. Uh, we did the weekly strange, and ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you have all enjoyed everything that we have been doing to try and make this podcast better. Uh, like I, you know, we've been just, you know, Corey here. Actually, when I say we, I mean us. But what I actually mean is this guy because he's been putting in countless hours and time and effort into doing things to make this podcast a lot better and he's been succeeding in tenfold uh thanks super appreciative (laughs) for all the hard work you do and i'm super appreciative for everyone who watches and listens to this podcast you guys are the best um just hands down you're the best if you've ever clicked play you are subscribe subscribe to the need subscribe yeah subscribe to the suicide moses productions uh page uh that's where you can find things like uh the random comic book review and let's draw and bands you might not know and of course you can always find the strange planet podcast at suicide moses productions on youtube uh got anything else nope like share subscribe if you enjoy any of these things any of these things on this channel, tell someone about it. Yeah, yeah. That's all we ask. Comment. Yeah. Talk still to waiting. Us. Still waiting for a comment from somebody that's not somebody we know. Yeah, we haven't got any comments on the actual podcast. Yeah. So yeah. Talk so to us. Uh, tell even us if something you... that you hate that yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah, right. If you didn't enjoy the trailer section this time, yeah. which is kind of something new that we tried. Yeah, out we're here. trying out new stuff. Uh, um, us watching trailers with you guys and talking about them as they roll. Yeah. That's something I didn't even know we were gonna do. Right. Kind of just. You know, I just expected to put it on loop and let it yep. play while we talked about it, but I right. kind of like that. No, I, I like really it, do too. Yeah. Tell us you didn't. Uh, like let it. us know what you think, uh, and we'll definitely take what you say, and we will we'll work on it. We will apply. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, on that note, this has been the Strange Planet Podcast. We have been your hosts. This has been... Corey James. And I've been Anthony Zevitek. Have a strange day. <laughs>